Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to show another swatch sheet. This is for uh, Faber-Castell Polychromo colored pencils. Um, if you go on the Faber-Castell website for um, all their different Faber-Castell products, there is a place in there that has polychromos and it shows all the colors and the numbers and the names but what I've done is created a swatch sheet so um, this will be available blank with no colors on it um, in the Etsy store the link is in the description box and for just a couple dollars you can purchase this and print it out and swatch your own polychromo pencils now I suppose you could print out the list of colors from the website, but you know when you print from your computer, um, whatever type of printer you have in your printer ink, the colors are not going to be true colors. So you really do want to swatch your pencils. So um, I suggest printing this out, and I printed it onto uh, good paper, so I'm using a mixed media paper and I've cut my paper to eight and a half by 11 and put it in my printer. I have an inkjet printer printed perfectly fine on this paper. It's 98 pound uh, mixed media paper. I'll have the link for that below as well. And um, I have gone ahead and swatched out all my polychromo pencils. Of course, at the moment I'm missing two. I can't find them at the moment, but I'll, I'll find them. Anyway, they've got the numbers. They've got the product number, the product name, and a place to swatch out all the colors. So if you have purchased a full set of polychromos, then you it's got all the colors for that. If you're um, buying them open stock, maybe a little bit at a time, as you purchase them, you can find the spot where it, where it corresponds and color it in until you have the full set of colors. And one thing I did notice is on the website, um, number A30, they're calling it salmon. And on the actual pencil where it's printed on the pencil, it's called dark flesh. Um, 131, they call coral. On the pencil, it's written medium flesh. And 132, beige red, is light flesh. So those colors, either I have maybe older pencils and they've possibly changed the name, or the website reflects an older name and the pencils I have are newer. I'm not sure which is the case, but um, on the sheet, I've written them in here, but on the actual sheet that's available, I have typed in both names so you'll have those listed. They also added um, a gold, silver, and copper metallic pencil, and I've just written those in on my sheet, so um, they're not really listed on the on the. Uh, on the sets. So anyway, here are the sheets. Here's what they look like when they're swatched out. So when I'm doing a swatch, uh, what I like to do is to take the color and put a single layer and I'm light handed. So what I'm trying to do is get a gradient with the pencil and show what it looks like with layers. And so for me, I'm doing three layers. I do the initial layer through the whole box lightly like that. Then I come back and I do a second layer, a little bit heavier, and about two-thirds of the way across. And then I come back to the end and I go heavier at the end. So that way, and I kind of smooth it out. So I want to get a gradient so that I can see from dark to light what this particular pencil will look like if it's laid down in layers. The reason for swatching your pencils is if you are um, doing some artwork and you're looking at the pencil, the color that they're painted, they're not always painted the exact color that the pencil is when you look at the color swatched out. And I know some people don't swatch. They just, when they're making art, they just have a scratch piece of paper beside them. They pick up a color, they scribble with it, they see what the color is. If that's what they're kind of going for, then that's what they use. For me, I love having a swatch book. I love being able to look at the colors and say, okay, that's the exact green that I want, and I know that it's May green, and I go pull it out, and that's the color that I use. So it's just a personal preference of whether or not you swatch um, 
and you'll find on here I've, I've really noticed on YouTube that there are um, about 50 50 50 percent of the people love to swatch their colors and 50 percent don't swatch their art supplies so it's just personal preference but if you do and you would like to have this sheet um, I've already done all the work for you again with the numbers the names and a nice place that you can swatch out your colors for every polychromo that is available on the market so purchase them print onto your own paper if you print on copier paper you will not get a good swatch you really need good paper either a watercolor paper that's smooth um, a hot press watercolor paper that's smooth or a mixed media paper so that you can lay down the colors with colored pencil you want to lay it down in layers if you um, are new to colored pencils the way that you do them is to lay them down with a really light hand and work up to getting a deeper tone so you want to get your practice your gradients and doing a swatch sheet is the perfect place to practice your gradients so this is three actually three layers of color of the same color and it'll show you what it looks like light and then a second layer makes the medium color and then a third layer makes the dark color so um, I suggest doing that you practice the more you get to know your art supplies the more you're gonna find what you like what you don't like the products that you like the colors that you like um, you get used to using them and figuring out um, what they can do for you swatching is really a great thing so here are the swatch sheets and there will be a link listed below if you'd like to purchase a blank one it won't have any color on it that's up to you to do with your colored pencils so no pencils are included it's just the information the templates for you to print out and have these to put into your book so what I do for my swatch book is I would put them um, back to back like this so that let's see this one should be on top so back to back like this so that you can flip it over and then slip it into a sheet protector I just buy a box of uh, sheet protectors that are um, PVC free and there is my sheet that I can refer to and that I put it into my swatch book is a binder it's a three ring binder with a table of contents so it'll say what page my um, Faber-Castell polychromas is on and then I would just put it into that section so I can easily find it when I'm doing my artwork so on my tab here I've got that um, Faber Castells are in section number five so here's my number five tab and here's my my polychromos to refer to so that's just a suggestion my way isn't necessarily the right way it's just what I do and it's just to give you an idea so maybe you'll think that this works out for you too I, I put everything in them um, my inks um, like for example Number 10 is Ranger Archival Inks, and I've just taken a stamp, and every time I purchase a Ranger Archival Ink, I put the name of it, and I stamp it. So now I know what color it looks like in person, because the color that's on the ink pad, obviously, is not going to look like this. It's going to be a lot darker because it's um, concentrated on the ink pad. So for me, when I'm wanting to stamp something in my background or do words, I can flip right to this page and go, oh, yep, that's exactly the color that I want. I want to use Seafarer on my page. It works for me. So maybe this will give you some inspiration to do this yourself. Um, and maybe you'll enjoy having your art supplies swatched out. And I've had a previous video. I used to use this as my swatch book. It's uh, one of the Jane Davenport butterfly journals. And I just outgrew it is all. Um, you know, like here's my Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s. But I just outgrew it because this is limited. And if Neo Color comes out with new colors or new sets, there's no way to add to it because the next page is already full. And in a notebook, you can always put a sheet protector and slip it into the three ring binder. So I, I ditched this and am redoing it and putting all my supplies into my three ring binder. And I just thought it'd be nice to share my 
templates that I'm creating. I'm doing them in Microsoft Excel. Um, and I just thought it'd be nice to share because I've already done hours and hours worth of work for you so that you've already got the, the empty template ready to go and just put your supplies in. So I'm sharing that with everyone and if you want to make a swatch book like this for your art supplies then um, it would be a great place to just purchase these templates and be able to swatch them out. Be sure you put them on good paper. That's what makes the difference if you're swatching watercolors. Obviously cut water pa watercolor paper and put that into your printer to do the swatching of your watercolors. If you're doing something like pencils, make sure it's on good mixed media paper or smooth watercolor paper so that the pencils are getting a true indication of what they will look like on your uh, papers in your art journals. So this is for art journaling. This could also be for somebody who's a professional artist that wants to swatch out their professional supplies. Some of my supplies are professional grade and some of them are student grade. I like to use a mixture of a little bit of everything. So um, what I offer here, I will just keep putting some videos up each time I make a new sheet. And if it's something that you have and you're interested in, the sheets will be inexpensive and uh, ready for you to purchase to make your swatch book. So thanks for stopping by and until next time when I have another list of colors to put in my swatch book, I will see you then.